Well, uh, again, a, a venturous weekend. Um, you know, didn't uh, I, I don't think we played very well. I think the guys will sit there and agree that we didn't play. We wanted to start, you know, start fast, and, and we didn't do that. And, uh, you know, when you get behind, you know, like that early on a, on an away team, on a, on a Big Ten team, it's, it's tough to come back. But, you know, it got us to the point where, you know, we started working on things that we wanted to make sure that we work on. We got a lot of young guys in there that played for us and, and played pretty well for us, made some young mistakes, made some, uh, you know, mistakes that we usually didn't make, you know, that, those first game mistakes, and, and, and they cost us. You know, when you look at the numbers and you look at the score, you know, by not by any means that we think we played well uh, in the turnover. You lose the turnover battle, you know, real bad. But uh, really, two of them were, were not very good, the drop punt and, and then the interception on the slant. The other two tip ones, uh, you know, sometimes happens. And, you know, if you eliminate the other two, then, then you're just a minus one instead of a minus three. So uh, some things that we can, we can definitely work on, get better at. Uh, but again, uh, we, we have to uh, because we're, we're a better football team than what we showed, you know, Saturday. Coach, could you talk us through what happened on Friday night? I mean, everybody saw the thunder, the lightning. Mm -hmm. uh, in baseball, it's, it's part of the game. You see a rain delay and you come out. But football is so different. How did you – did it – did the delay and then – dragging you to an hour and two hours. Did it take some of the edge off your players in your mind? Yeah, I, I, and it's, it's kind of, that one's kind of hard to answer because we didn't play Friday, you know. Um, it kind of, we went out, we warmed up, and we got kind of got called in on warm up. So it wasn't very long compared to when the game was supposed to be played. Starting at 8-12, I think around, uh, maybe 8.45 or something, 9 o'clock, they kind of called it. And really the big thing, uh, big, the hardest thing was finding 100 hotel rooms at 9 o'clock and 9.30 at night. And that, that was the hardest, and that's what, what took the longest, and, and we didn't. And, uh, you know, Nolan, Nolan Jones, our director of football ops, did a great job of, you know, finding a place, you know, for us because everything was booked and because it wasn't planned. So, uh, but we wanted to make sure we had a place to stay before we kind of agreed to plan the game the next day. And uh, that was kind of the, what took the longest is making sure that we could find a place for them to stay and eat and do all those things. So once we got that, we got on the road. We stayed in Bloomington, which is about 45 minutes away. Got there, went to bed, got up in the morning, came back. We had to go to pregame meal back at the place we stayed at. Friday night, and then we got over to the stadium and played the game. Coach, did you get a sense on Saturday that before the game that you sensed that things were different, that you have a better feel? Obviously, you didn't play Friday night, but you have a better feel Friday night? Like, okay, we're ready, and then Saturday, was there a little different wishy-washy more feeling? I don't think it was wishy-washy. I mean, it's not the same when you prepare to play, and then all of a sudden it's, you know, it's taken away. A little bit, but uh, you know, there's a different, definitely a lot of things that happen that that um, you couldn't control. But was it the same feeling? Of course, no, because we we're, you know, you warmed up and you were ready. You went through the whole day, and uh, you know, I've been part of games that were canceled in third quarter. I've been part of games that canceled at halftime, but not, you know, right at the beginning. So uh, definitely was it was. Definitely a different feel, but I wouldn't say that it wasn't that different, you know, a feel. I think our guys were still ready to play. Um, but when you're geared up to play Friday, you're geared up to play Friday. Coach, anything inside the numbers from, uh, from players that caught your eye when you go on film or at the game that kind of bodes well going down the road? Well, I think uh, when you look offensively, you look at, you know, Miles Washington and, and Miles Hibbler. Both of those guys were, uh, did a good job. I think, you know, when you look at our numbers, running the ball wasn't great numbers-wise because we had a lot of 
negative plays in that deal. Uh, but we ran the ball pretty well in between the tackles. <coughs> the problem that we had was was on the edge. You know, we didn't do a very good job of blocking the perimeter, you know, very well. So, uh, but those two guys and then, you know, P.J. Simmons, again, led us in, in, in receptions, uh, had a critical error on his touchdown, kind of got called back because he jumped. And then Treyon's, um, Touchdown got called back because when I was Washington jumped. So a couple two freshmen who made, you know, freshman mistakes, but uh, I think they're they're good players and they're going to help us. You know, defensively, I think uh, you know, kind of some new guys. Nick Cutbert played, you know, pretty well for us. Got in there, and then uh, Wantez McCray as safety, I think is going to do a good job for us. Defensively, you guys allowed some relatively quick scores. Mm -hmm. What kind of just got play better, you know. A lot of it was, um, a lot of it was, kind of mistakes we haven't made, you know. And I think, and I talk with Nate, and I talk to a couple guys, you know. When you try super super hard, you end up screwing it up, and that's kind of what the beginning half was. We wanted to play so well, and we wanted to do, you know, such a good job that we end up, we end up screwing up base stuff stuff that we worked on a bunch and, um, you know, and that's what's so frustrating for us and our guys because they, they knew it's kind of after the fact, you know, you know, you know right away that you made the mistake, you know, and, um, but those are things, like I said, we can clean up. Those are things that we'll get better at and they know that they, it can't happen. We talked about mental errors. Mental errors can't happen. You can't have mental errors. We can have a missed tackle. We can have a guy catch a ball on us. You know, we may miss a block here and there because, again, they made their own scholarship too. But mental errors we can't have. Coach, did you come out of uh, Illinois pretty much in good shape physically? Yeah, yeah. we're yeah we're good. What kind of a relief is that to come out healthy after some of the you know the rash of injuries last season? Uh, good. I mean, because uh, you can still uh, get the guys and improve. We all we get a couple guys back who. We didn't play. Ryan Malone uh, didn't travel with us and didn't play. We get Ryan back and, and also Antoine Dixon. We get Antoine Dixon back, you know, this week also too. So, um, and they'll help us on the offensive side. You talked about running uh, between the tackles. You got a good push out of Trey out on the goal line. Yeah. Is that kind of what where you see him going forward or? Yeah, and, and, and his role may get a little better. I think he, he played eight snaps, you know, for us on offense and played on seals and played on delta, you know, for us. I think, uh, you know, Trayon knows for him to, for him to uh, further his career, you know, and want to play on the next level. Special teams is going to be a big part, and he's been awesome, you know, for us on the special team part of it. And we talked about it, you know, we want to see how he can do with eight. Eight can go to 12, 12 can go to 15, 15 can go to 20. We'll just see how it goes. Mm -hmm. So that's a building process? Yeah. Is that because of the foot? Or? Uh, no, just conditioning a little bit, see what he can do. And again, we have a lot of bodies there. Right. We've got a lot of guys there who can play for us and who can help us. And, you know, he doesn't need to be a 40, you know, a 40 play guy or 30 play guy and get beat up you know, all year when we can sit there and spell him and get whatever many plays that we're going to have him do, we're, they're going to be whatever great plays for me. Jimmy, I should have mentioned we're joined by defensive lineman Nate Tribune and wide receiver Ernest Calhoun. What do you guys players as well? Nate, uh, now you start to prepare. You can shunt this to the side. Get ready for Delaware State. It's a home opener. Hope it's going to be a lot cooler if, if, if the weather is, uh, holds up. What does it mean uh, to just get out of your system and now concentrate on the next game after what happened at, Cham at Champaign-Urbana? Well, um, <clears throat> for me, kind of, you know, you watch the film the next day and you put it behind you, good game or bad game. Right. You can't dwell on it either way. So right now, you know, I know the mindset in the locker room is we're all worried about Delaware State. So that's where, you know, we're concentrating on that right now. One other thing for me, Coach, 
quick looking back, can you talk about Shane and how he played being a redshirt freshman and a kicker? Because Anthony went through it, Freddie Cortez went through it in, yeah. in previous administ- in previous coaching. Can you a quick comment on Shane and how you know, he did? I, I think he did a good job after you, you know, when you go out there for the very first time, you get the first one blocked. <laughs> um, you know, that's not how you want to want to start. And then you, you know, and that's why we, we made the decision at that point in the game, you know, to go for it or, or kick it. I wanted to make sure that he got another kick in, an opportunity. And it was good to see that he nailed it, you know. So um, that's kind of what we need from him. That's what we expect from him. And, and he did a good job with it. Is it nice to have somebody like that and take some pressure off of Anthony and just Anthony can just worry about and, and, and other parts of the kicking game? Yeah, that's definitely. And that's kind of what we recruited Shane for, and it's, it's worked out that way. So uh, we just got to make sure he stays consistent. And, you know, we, we have a, uh, you know, we talked about going into that game as he gets better. His distance may go a little bit, but, you know, from the 25, 30 at the edge is where he'll be able to kick from. Uh, Nate, uh, Coach, what Coach said earlier, was that accurate about guys just trying too hard to be too good? Uh, I think um, I think we kind of put some added pressure on ourselves. I know I did um, going into that game, and I, I had some you know people talking about mental errors that I normally I haven't um, had through camp, and um, for whatever reason, you know I, I screwed up in that uh, respect. And I know I just got to work on that this week, and I got you know the first game jitters I guess out of the way, so uh, that won't happen again. Paul, you did a lot of different things in camp. Um, you know, starting with your senior trip, um, you know, two days of foot stuff, you know, a zoning afternoon, and all those different things that you did. Obviously, it's easy for, you know, us to sit here and say, well, you know, maybe that didn't work based on what happened Saturday. Well, what are you thinking as far as what you did and, and Saturday is kind of one of the things that happened, or do you not feel like you were where you needed to be, or what, what were you thinking? You just didn't play well. You know, but one thing you won't get from me, I'm not going to second guess on what I did. I mean, it's game one. We got long season. Tell me in November, I did good or not. Um, this may be a question more so for the players, but coach, definitely feel free to jump in on this. But you know, um, playing teams like Illinois and in past Ohio State, Penn State in your first year here, you know, what kind of experience are you gaining from playing, you know, power conference teams like that? Yeah, I'll go. Um, it's a good experience, like as far as crowds go. Um, crowd, I think the crowd was a big thing for me at Ohio State and at Illinois because you usually don't get that that kind of noise when you're trying to get calls in and trying to focus. Um, those things are hard to do, and at the same time, you're also trying to play perfect because any mistakes you make, they're going to capitalize on them. Um, so it can either hurt your game or it can sharpen it and as we go back and we watch the film I, I can definitely see us sharpening our skills and seeing where we messed up at and being able to hone in on those mistakes and get rid of them as we go through uh, conference play or at our home openers and things like that. Um, for me, you know, kind of what he was talking about the crowd, I think it almost has the reverse effect for other teams in those conferences when they go there. The crowd like um, can affect them more. I think for us, you know, because we usually play, you know, 20,000, whereas you go to one of those big schools and they have 60 or 70,000, it kind of just gets you juiced up and, and ready to go anyway. Um, and I, I love going against, um, you know, that type of competition, and I think it raises your game. Aaron, you had the drop on the punt, yet, you know, they throw you right back out there, you end up making some plays after that. Can you just kind of talk about what something like that that happened for us? Uh, yeah, that's something that I've struggled with a lot uh, this season specifically, uh, especially going into camp. I, I tend to like really focus on things that I mess up on and not let them go, and it angers me a lot. So um, being able to go out there and make a mistake and them not give up on me and have me go back out there and try and make a play, um, it, it helped a lot for me to put it in the back of my mind and move on and go to the next play. Still upsetting. I thought about it all night, but uh, you just got to move on for, from it and make sure that it never happens again. Was there anything in particular that led to it? 
Just took my arm. No, no, no sun. It, my my hands weren't wet. Nothing like that. It's just I called for the fair catch, and when I went to catch it, I looked down briefly to see if I had enough room to make my catch, and it slipped through my hands. Have you had a chance to look at him, Coach, in that day or two since, since the Illinois game? Yeah, we I've, I've watched them. Um, again, and, and, you know, they have a staff that's familiar to Ohio. They have a, a lot of Ohio backgrounds, a lot of head coaching experience on this staff, you know, veteran staff also, too. So, um, again, the, the head coach comes from, from Youngstown State, the defensive coordinator who I know very well, Jamie Bryant, he has a background at Youngstown State in Houston, and he's from Ohio, you know, also, too. But, um, you know, our challenge is us right now, to be honest with you, and just making sure that we continue to get better in these next three weeks, and that's really important for us. But, you know, Delaware State will come in here, and, I mean, I'm sure they look at us on tape, especially after that one, and say that it's a game that they – feel that they can compete and win. And they look at it again, they whatever, lost 39-13, and you know, we beat Liberty 17-10 to 10 or something. Yeah. So it's going to be a game that they feel that they can come in here and win, which is which is a good thing because we, we uh, will be ready. Our guys will play hard. We will uh, prepare like crazy. Uh, but we'll, we'll fix the things that we didn't do very well, too. I mean, you mentioned crowd noise. In a away game, what's it going to be like to, to have, you know, be back at home and, and play in front of your own home crowd? No, it's very exciting. You know, home opener, um, again, you uh, get a big crowd and, and you love playing in your home stadium and in front of your fa fans, friends, and family. So it'll be exciting. Did that, you know, Bola seemed to play pretty well. Have you played yourself into a situation where you're going to see snaps every game? Or yeah. In these first four weeks, we definitely will. Can you just talk about his play overall? Uh, I think he played well. Um, did the things that we asked him to do. So, you know, just like we we do every year, we're going to make sure that he's, you know, ready to go because he's one snap away from being in there. So uh, we'll pick and choose when, but he will definitely get snaps when the game is on the line, you know, uh, for these next three weeks for sure. You know, their offensive line is all returning. Um, you know, they, they're, they're more experienced on the offensive side than they are on the defense side, but they got three all-conference players. You know, one of the defensive ends and, and two of the secondary guys are all-conference <coughs> players for them. Uh, but you look at them offensively, they have eight returning stars, I believe, in their whole offensive line. You know, it's back a new quarterback, um, you know, but, but they're very good up front. They, they do a good job, and you know the offense coordinator and offensive line coach came from Lock Haven, so they came together. Uh, so I'm sure they're on the same page of what they want to do. I think they're in the same boat of being in year one of just continue to get better and do the things that they do. Um, kind of hard again. This is really almost like a first game again because you only got one game. You don't want them to where they can go back. You know, and previously look at us. We we just got one game on them. So I'm sure they didn't show everything, um, you know, but, but they got multiple formations. They got multiple uh, personnel. You know, Jamie is a, is a blitz guy, so we're going to see some pressure, you know, on the, on the defensive side of the ball. So uh, it, it'll be a good challenge for us, and, and it'll help us moving forward as we get into their spread team, get into some spread, but they also get into some 12 and 21 personnel. Ernie, have you guys seen any film yet on Delaware State? Does anything jump out at you? Uh, we watched uh, a little bit of film earlier today, and uh, it, it should be a different test for us because on the outsides, uh, they play man, but it's more so off man. Um, so we'll have to have our hands ready when they shoot later on down the field. Um, as far as their uh, inverts or their alley defenders go, um, they play head up as where Illinois was playing more so outside leverage. So it'll be a different blocking task as we go through that. And also um, 
Illinois had some good size on their inverts as well. Um, as as far as size goes, they're more relative to our size, so it'll be a different type of blocking. Uh, just kind of what Coach was saying, I've been able to watch their 11 personnel, and um, right away, you know, kind of the experience of their O-line looks like it jumps out. Um, they look all very technically sound, and it'll be a good challenge for our D-line and defense. Thank, Thank you. you.